Welcome back, everybody. The Stoner Jesus Show on Skype. We have Mindy Mink from MindyMink.com. That's Mindy with two eyes. You want to find her, MindyMink.com. Welcome to the show, Mindy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out because a lot of people search my name, but they spell it M I N D Y. Yeah. And that's not me. And they're not going to find you. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll, they'll not find me. They'll find some other Mindy's, but they won't find me, Mindy Mink. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming on the show and, and taking time out of your schedule. I know you're busy and got a lot of stuff going on. Of course, we'll talk about all that uh, during the yeah. interview. Um, but I want to start with uh, you're in the adult business. Uh, you do videos and, and content. Uh, how'd you, how and why did you get started doing that? Ooh, um, I started doing any type of adult work as a webcam model just over five years ago. And the way that happened was I was doing sales and marketing um, for various companies and the company I was working for at that point, five years ago, my job went from full-time to part-time. And so it was kind of one of those thoughts of what am I going to do now? <laughs> and I was a single mom, you know, at the time, uh, and I was moving out of state in a year. So the whole idea of getting a whole new job and that kind of thing just didn't seem possible. And so my boyfriend, who um, who is now my fiance, but he had said, well, in the meantime, you should be a webcam model. And I didn't really understand what that even was. Like, I never really watched porn. I, you know, I've always been a sexual person, uh, but never knew what that was. So he pulled up some sites and I went, oh, so oh, okay. I, I could try that. I mean, got nothing to lose, possibly a lot to gain. So I started doing that, and that was October of 2012. And then by January 1st, I quit the then part-time job and went full-time with webcamming and built up a nice uh, following and fans doing uh, the camming shows. Uh, and then there was always that kind of like, well, are you ever going to get into porn? You know. So then I was like, well... Maybe. And then <laughs> I finally decided because I've been bisexual my entire life and um, love the ladies so much that uh, I would do girl, girl. Yeah. Porn. And so then I ventured out to the big AVN expo that's held in Vegas every year in January and met uh, the company that I was feeling was most suited for me and fill out an application. And then a few months later, they had me come out, and that was in June of 14, and um, got exclusively contracted with them for a year and a half, which was amazing, because I was like this webcam model, and now I was shot up to this lesbian porn star. <laughs> 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 so everything just like fell into my lap in a way. I, I was very blessed and fortunate. And uh, so, yeah, that's how I started off, getting into everything. I feel like so, I, I should have introduced you as lesbian porn star. I think that would have been a better beginning to the interview <laughs> yeah i might might have been because that is all i do um mm. i have a lot of people asking you know will i ever do boy girl and the answer is no i will not do boy girl for personal reasons yeah. um it's just not my cup of tea uh i am now engaged but even if i wasn't engaged or whatever i still it still wouldn't be something i would want to do um it's just like i said not really my cup of tea uh now what's Confusing to people is uh, I film a lot of um, kinky fetish style video clips yeah. for the clip. Clips. And every once in a while, there'll be one out there or people will find one where there's, you know, a cock in my mouth or <laughs> in my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so then it confuses people. I thought you didn't do boy girl. I don't. It's that's my guy. That's my man. Yeah. You know, occasionally I get the request um, to do that. And you know, a paid custom video. So I do, but that's the only one that you'll see me with. <laughs> yeah. I noticed a lot of your videos online are you talking to like point of view, like talking to the camera. Uh, is that your guy behind the camera and you're basically just like, in your mind, you're, you're talking to him while you're doing that. Yeah. Um, that's exactly what's happening. He's, he's filming it and I'm talking to the camera because the virtual reality, not virtual reality, the virtual, um, sex idea um, where, you know, I get people email me their story idea, uh, for a custom video. And then I do that for them. 
And so they come up with a scenario and story. And so I'm just like talking to them, so to speak. He's holding the, my fiance is holding the camera, but yeah. So I'm acting out the story in the vir- in its virtual sex, um, 90% of the time, 90, probably 5% of the time. So it's simulated sex. You yeah. know, it looks like I'm giving a blow job, you know, or having sex or, you know, whatever. So yeah, those, that's the, besides the lesbian porn that I film, I go to LA and Vegas and film for major production companies. That is a huge part of what I've been doing, you know, yeah. the last probably three years is the, uh, the custom videos. So I noticed a lot of them are like, um, you said that the fetishes is like a mom, stepmom, aunt type fetishes. Is that what you get mostly requested for? Yes, definitely. And you know, when I started webcam modeling that first day, <laughs> 26, <laughs> 2012, I'll never forget it. The campsite that I'm on, you can, um, take me one-on-one exclusive. Mm. And then you can also like start a paid room and multiple people can come in and out. So day one, I had someone say, can you do a stepmom son role play in exclusive? And I was like, what does that mean? Like, I, I didn't understand <laughs> anything. Okay. Like I said, I never watched porn. So people would say J-O-I and C-E-I and all these like, I'm like, I don't know what any of this means, but <laughs> So he explained to me, well, I want you to pretend like you're my stepmom. And I was like, oh. And then and then I said, well, you know, I'm actually a mom of a son. I don't know if I can do this. You know, because yeah. at that time it was like, I, I don't know, you know. So we went into the, the exclusive room and then I acted it out and played the part. And, you know, he stayed in the room for a very long time. And... <laughs> You know, at the time, like I said, you know, struggling to make ends meet, I was like, I can do this. (laughs) I was going to ask, is this something you like discovered that you were good at and you weren't like self-conscious about like the acting out and all that? Yes. I discovered that I am really good at the (laughs) role play. And it's just from that day on, it's just that was always what, well, it helped that when I started webcamming, I was almost 45 years old. I'm 49 now. I just turned 49 this month. But so the age, people would see the age, you know, on my profile, my cam site, and they would be like, she's perfect for that role play. Yeah. And then people learned I was really a mom and that just upped, upped, up my popularity. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's it's weird. So I started doing this show. I've interviewed quite a few cam models and, and adult stars and. I even thought, you know, I watched a lot of porn in my life and I thought, well, I know, you know, everything there is to know about porn. But some of the fetishes I had no idea, like the balloon fetish and the penis humiliation fetish and stuff like that I never knew existed. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know about it either until I started webcamming and I was getting these requests, you know, of of the small penis humiliation and um, the CEI. That was always I was like, CEI, you know, that one's come eating instructions. Hmm. Um. You know, I've had so many different types of Skype shows because now I offer Skype as yeah. well as, you know, I'm on, on my, I'm on a cam site, but only once a week for my membership website for members. And then other people can can watch, too, and pay a per minute rate. But I couldn't I I could write a book. I could <laughs> write a book about all the different kinks and fetishes that I've done either through a custom video or through a show. It's amazing you probably should that's probably a really good idea (laughs) i know and you know what tomorrow i'm filming two custom videos and one of them one of them's a a lesbian thing so that one's not you know that unusual but if i can i'll tell you what the one tomorrow is absolutely i've never been asked this before this one is really different so the story goes that i'm waking up this man not necessarily son or whatever, just, just boyfriend, probably, you know, I'm guessing. Um, and I wake him up and I let him know that I just castrated him in the night while he was sleeping. (laughs) And then I'm going to pull out a cooked sausage and let him know, show him that this is your penis and it's mine, you know, and you're never have sex with anybody. And then I'm going to cut the sausage in pieces and eat it. And talk about how yummy his penis is and how I 
taste has come and all this wild stuff. I'm trying to remember all the all the script to it, but um, and that's the gist of the story. Wow. You know, it's. I mean, again, every time I turn around, I get asked to do something even more wild or more crazy, and that one definitely will be be up there. <laughs> I've I've eaten. I've done the boar fetish where um, I had little tiny people and they were in cereal and I was eating them. Um, armpit <laughs> fetish. I'm trying to think of the really different ones. Armpit. Yeah. So I've done Skype shows or, or whatever where to just focus on my armpit. Hmm. You know, to each his own, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, you know, I pretty much have done or are willing to do just about anything, you know, except for the ones that are obviously like, you know, no. I don't even have to even say which ones those are, but you know, the ones that you just don't do, you know, yeah. as far as all the weird kinky stuff, I actually like it because I find it different and it's, you know, it's never a dull moment over here at my house. I'll just put it to you that way. <laughs> it keeps things fun. So if you're, uh, you're, you're doing the Skype shows, you can see them, right? Yeah. Like whatever they're doing. So what's like the craziest thing you've ever seen as far as that goes? Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. What I've seen, <clears throat> I've seen, I guess the craziest would be I've seen men dress up um, as women and use toys on them themselves, you know, um, and eat their cum. Yeah. Is there anything you've ever seen where you're just like, no, I can't, I can't do this. You got to stop doing that. <laughs> no, there really hasn't been anything. Yeah. yeah that's good. Yeah, there hasn't been anything. I'm like I said, and I think people find when they meet me um, on on Skype and stuff to do these shows that I'm easy to talk to, and I am like the least judgmental person. I don't like to be judged for anything I do, and I felt that way my whole life, and I yeah. have never judged people ever. It's just not cool. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We're, here to, we're not here to judge one one another. So <laughs> I think if given off that persona and that people know they can come to me with their wildest fetish or ideas or thoughts and I'm going to be totally cool about it because back to like the girl girl filming mm -hmm. born um there's a lot of women you know that are older like myself I think I'm probably one of the oldest ones out there no joke no joke um but a lot of the more mature women will not do the stepdaughter stepson filming they're yeah. just not not comfortable with it but like like I was saying earlier and you brought up, I, I've been doing it now for over five years, this whole step son, step daughter mentality. So, and I'm good at it. No, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, and who knows, you know, in another few years from now, the fetish might be something different, you know, um, it kind of goes in waves, you know, yeah. fetish and thoughts. And I, and a lot of people have asked me, well, why do you think the step son thing is so popular? And, I've asked a few of the ones that I have Skyped with doing these, these types of shows for literally three, four years. And they're not just guys who are 18, 20 years old. They're guys that are 30 and 40 years old. Um, Cause I think that's the misconception that it might always be a younger guy wanting to portray the son part. Yeah. But um, I've learned through speaking with some of my, um, you know, hardcore fans that have stuck with me for years that it's, they're kind of desensitized by what's out there. You, you know, I mean, like it's easy to see anything these days, right? Yeah. And we all know mentally your brain is the biggest sex organ. So if that is stimulated, the rest will follow. And I think a lot of men have reached that point where they've seen everything and they need something more to get excited about and doing something that's quote unquote so wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? It's exciting to them. And they, they like that feeling of, oh, my God, I'm having sex with my stepmom, even though they're not. But you yeah. know what I mean? It's just that, that the idea. It's all the idea. That's why if you notice in the, in all these taboo videos that you've seen, um, there's such a story to it. Yeah. There's a lot of story to it. And when I do the shows as well, the Skype shows, there's, a, there's always a story. Always. Not no. like I just hop on and hi son, how are you? You know, <laughs> <laughs> so it's that mental stimulation. 
Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah. Um, and you know what's interesting I learned? Sure. Yeah. More recently in mainstream, the taboo stuff is happening. Yeah. In mainstream too. So it's not just in porn. Yeah, the internet seem, definitely seems to be accelerating everything. Like you said, a lot of guys are desensitized and they watch a lot of porn and they just need something else. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's I think that's where a lot of the fetishes have started to come to the forefront. Absolutely. It's definitely an interesting time. Um, switching gears a little bit, uh, obviously this is the Stoner Jesus show and we love marijuana <laughs> and everything about it. Um, can you tell me about the uh, first time... That uh, you tried weed. Do you remember uh, where you were and how it went down? Yes. I was probably about 14, 15, somewhere in there. I grew up in the country. Um, you know, grew up on 20 acres of land with, you know, horses, chickens, pigs, cows, wow. you know, grew our vegetables. And that whole area where I lived, marijuana and growing was the thing. Yeah. So okay. I was pretty young when I tried it. Uh, of course, with a friend, actually it was a boyfriend to be specific. And I remember, I just thought, wow, this is the coolest feeling ever. <laughs> <laughs> and then at that same kind of age point, I also got drunk one time, you know, at a party and I was sick as a dog for like yeah. two days. And I got caught. My mom and dad found out, you know, and I was so sick. I said, I swear I will never drink alcohol again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't say I never did, but I never drank really alcohol after that. I still don't even yeah. this day. Maybe a glass of wine here and there or a cocktail, but literally my consumption of alcohol is maybe, maybe two times a month. I might have something alcoholic, you know, weed was, just the one that always felt the best and just worked for me. You yeah. Know, well, definitely best. a lot of people can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was pretty early, you know, considering my age now, it's a long time ago. And it's interesting because back then it was like, there was just one kind of weed, you know, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's all these strains and it's, you know, this helps with that. And, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing what has happened. Absolutely. So uh, if I ask you about the highest you've ever been, is there a, a specific incident that comes to mind? Oh. Or maybe you were just like, oh, I'm just, I'm just a little too high. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know I have felt that way. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember specifically what that moment was or where I was at. And, you know, actually, I've always kind of called myself a one-hit wonder. Hmm. Because I've been typically a lightweight. It doesn't take, especially with the strains today. Yeah. You know, I literally can take one or two puffs and I'm good for hours. <laughs> you know, and I smoke regularly. You know, I smoke every week. You know, I'm smoking mostly on the weekend because I, although I will say when I do Skype shows or cam shows on the cam site for my members, I always take a puff. A little puff, just because oh, yeah. it, you know, makes it more fun, and I'm more creative. I and mean, we all know mm -hmm. how much more creative we are when we're when we're stoned, right? We have all these great ideas and thoughts, and oh yeah, you know, it just <laughs> makes it more fun. So I, but I don't need a whole lot, you know. Yeah. But starting so high, I, you know, there's been times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're on the West Coast, right? Yes, I'm in uh, Northern California. Okay, so you got the medical out there, and obviously your recreational is coming too. Um, do you have any? Uh, you mentioned, uh, I think it was you a long time ago when we were going back and forth about the interview about using like um, the the topicals and and things like that, like the CBD. Um, yes. Oh my gosh. Have I'm you so felt how's that? How how's that helped you? You know, in general. Yeah, I was so excited. Um, I was in Arizona for three years and I moved back to Northern California uh, a little over a year ago. And that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to get my license so I can go to the dispensaries and get what I need. And it was through that consult with the doctor that I learned about CBD. I had no, never heard of it. I didn't even know what it was. And she explained to me how that's like the healing properties of the cannabis plant and how it just can help you with so many different 
ailments and issues and because I've had neck and shoulder um, issues for a long, long, long time due to some accidents. And I was like, well, you know, that'd be great. I would love to try it. So the first time I went to the dispensary, I talked to the folks there and they set me up with CBD oil Mm -hmm. and it's just drops that you put underneath your tongue. Okay. Um, And I've tried a couple, I've, I've tried one of the topicals. But I still find that the oil is the best. It gets yeah. in your system the best and the fastest. Usually within about 20 to 30 minutes, um, I can feel the difference if I'm hurting somewhere or I don't feel good or something like that. And I've turned a lot of friends on to it because let's face it, I'm 49. So most of my friends are that age or older. And <laughs> you know, it starts breaking down. You start moving the wrong way and, ah, you know. Yeah. And, our bodies are just breaking down from old injuries and things like that. So I, I have friends that have had knee problems and women have hip problems and, and it has tremendously helped myself and my friends. So I am so thrilled that the CBD came alive, <laughs> you know, in the last however long, I don't even know how long the CBD has been around. Cause I only learned about it about a year ago, this time last year. Yeah, it's been uh, a few years has come to the forefront. The um, the Dr. Sanjay Gupta um, documentaries on CNN were focused on CBD and helping kids with epilepsy and stuff like that. I think that's really what got a lot of people interested in searching about it. And since yeah. then, it's become just a massive thing. Yeah, and it's great. You know, Absolutely. it's great that it's helping so many people. And I love the fact, you know, that it doesn't alter your mind at mm. all. So especially for people who don't want to feel high or anything, but they want the body to feel better. It's, yeah. it's perfect. I, you know, I think it needs to be um, promoted more. And, and I, I mean, I wish like your regular doctors, you know, were really into enforcing it or promoting it or prescribing it. Cause I think, you know, it's still, to me, it seems like it's still, in that genre of, oh, you know, it's illegal. You're not supposed to do it. And and the, and I think the bigger problem is the testing. People, you know, that have jobs that get randomly drug tested or they're applying for a new job. I was told at the dispensary that even the CBD in your body can be detected. And it is, um, and some employers will not hire you. Yeah. Because there's, of that. Like, there's been a lot of, a lot of progress, but there's still uh, definitely a long way to go. Yes. Absolutely. I'm thinking that. That's crazy, you know, that if people are using it for helping and healing, that they wouldn't be able to get a job or they would lose their job because of it. So you're right. There's a long ways to go. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, yeah. a lot of people may not know, but uh, you are also, you also do radio. Uh, can you tell yes. us about your radio show? Yes. Um, I've been doing radio for the last couple of years. Uh, and the company that I've been working for just got recently bought out by someone who had a um, music channel called uh, Cherry Pop Radio. Uh, It's commercial free music, every genre you can think of, um, which is nice. There's no commercials, unlike some of the other ones out there. And they've added an adult talk channel. Um, And I will start, uh, officially starts um, January 1st. So just, you know, coming up here. Um, So people can download the app, you know, or type in cherrypopradio.com on their computer and listen to music, and then when the shows come on through the adult channel, you can listen. My show is Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's two hours, so 7 to 9 on Tuesdays. So I actually fly, I will be flying down to L.A. every week to do my show uh, live in the studio, and it's going to be great because I've done the other one I was doing, I was doing from home remotely, yeah. and Uh, I love the idea that I'm going to be down in the area where I can get other performers to come in and, you know, co-host with me and have fun and, you know, see them and be playful with the girls, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Is that uh, something you, um, you you host by yourself or do you have a regular co-host or or how does that work? Um, The first year I did it, I did it all by myself. And then this, this year I added a co-host, but she's not going to continue on with me. She lives in Arizona and she's not continuing on with me. So I'm starting off as kind of a solo, but not really. I've, I'm going to do my first few shows with Evan Stone. If you know who that is, he's um, been in the porn industry for a very long time. He has his own radio show and he's going to co-host with me um, at least for the first few weeks or so until I, you know, scout out another female um, 
to bring into the studio and have fun with. Um, and I like the co-hosting actually, just because if somebody doesn't, if people aren't calling in, you know, yeah. not that I, obviously I don't have a problem talking, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but still it's more fun when you can talk with somebody and go back and forth. And if no one calls in two hours is a long time. Yeah. I did that for the first year and it was, it got tough. Yeah. yeah. There were times where it got tough or, you know, the, the thing is a lot of the same people call, you know, and then you get to a point where we you talk to them and, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So it, I do like the co-host idea. Plus now that I'm going to be in a, a studio and have my co-host side by side, of course, I love the idea of having another female there um, because eventually we're going to offer um, VIP memberships for being able to see us, yeah. not just hear us. And of course, you know, we're going to get down and dirty and do some fun stuff, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it'll be uh, well worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So if it, and the only way you'll be able to hear my show is if you download the app or pull it up on your computer, Cherry Pop Radio. Um, that's the only way you'll be able to hear it. Um, it. The other radio station I was working for, they had podcasts that would play and things like that. Um, but now it's just through Cherry Pop. Okay. Cherry Pop Radio. So, so yeah. besides MindyMink.com, what was that? Yeah. I would say if you're ever in LA, I might interview you. Have you come to the studio with me? And awesome. My what do you think about that? I would definitely love to come in. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm stuck out here in Kentucky, and it's it's not very fun. Oh, I was wondering where you were at. Okay, you know, across the river from Cincinnati. So okay, kind of, all kind right. Of a black hole, uh, especially when marijuana is concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's yeah, not the greatest. Come to California because of you know with the whole marijuana thing. I mean it's. There's so much going on in California, obviously. Yeah, I was in so, L.A. for a high school trip, which was 20 years ago now. And uh, that's the last time I've been out there. So oh. that's changed. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you come out that way for, for other types of things. And you can be a, um, a guest on my show. Oh, absolutely. I'll you. definitely take you up on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so besides MindyMink.com, of course, Mindy with two eyes, uh, where are some of the other places, uh, websites, and social media that people can find you? I have a Twitter is my like biggest social media that I participate in. And it's my, I keep everything simple. It's my name at Mindy Meek. So okay. you can easily, easily find me there. Um, and then on the website, Mindy Meek.com there's, it's a membership website. So all my, I, what's nice doing my own membership website is I'm in control of what I want to film and who I want to film with. Yeah. Oh, you know, and that, that makes it, I just, I literally just launched that in September this year. I've been something I've been working on the last couple of years to happen. Um, so in there, there's a store tab, which will redirect you to uh, if you want to do a Skype show with me, if you want me to make you a custom video, if you want to buy a DVD movie that I'm in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I sell, you know, bras and panty sets and clothing I've worn and, you know, all that stuff. So if you go to the store tab, then you will see that you can reach out to me and have fun with me and, and other yeah. types of ways too, besides the um, membership side of things where you're seeing all the, the girl, girl and solo scenes that I've done. And awesome. then I do have Instagram, although I'm not real active on it. <laughs> Someone took my name years ago and created Mindy Meek Instagram account. Um, and I was kind of mad about that when I found that out. I was like, wait, that's my name. What? But they actually have helped because they are posting pictures of me and they promote my website. So I'm not really oh, that upset that over it. Cool. And I'm not really that upset over it anymore. And I created one uh, that mink is soft um, because that's what I'm known for, my mink. <laughs> Let's see here. Yes. And, uh, but I don't do much on there because... Um, I just am so busy on Twitter. I'm yeah. not, I don't have Facebook. I mean, just managing Twitter is a lot sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Know? Yeah. So that's well, the best social media wise to find me. Yeah. But make sure you check out the, the radio show and the website and all that. Mindy, I want to thank you. It took us a, a little while to get it together, but we are. <laughs> we, I know. We did Better it. Late than ever. <laughs> absolutely. Um, if you ever want to come back on the show, if you have anything to promote, you know, you know where to find me, just let me know. I appreciate that. I just did an audition for the new Batwoman movie that Axel Braun is, is doing this next year and uh, tried out for the Huntress character. 
So if I get that, um, that would be a fun one to talk about as far as help. Because I've never done a parody type movie like yeah. that and be a character, especially a comic book character. How cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So if I get that part, we'll definitely have to talk about how that went for me and how much fun that was. That sounds awesome. Mindy, yeah. again, thank you for taking the time. And uh, everybody go check out MindyMink.com. Thank you. Thank Bye, you, Mindy. Have a good one. I want to say that thank you to all my fans that support Absolutely. me and keep me doing what I love to do. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Mindy. Have a good one. <laughs> thank you. You too. All right, bye. Bye. Mindy Mink. Go check her out. MindyMink.com. This is the Standard Jesus Show. We'll be back or we'll hear the end of the show. I don't know. It's one of those things. <laughs> bye, everybody. Thanks, Mindy. MindyMink.com.